Now, you guys may have been thinking, oh, it might, it's another J-Class video. Well, nope. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. So, if you've seen my last video, the video when I did the history of my R-Class locomotive. Oh, don't worry, this ain't the history of the K-Class, because the K-Class was recently built this year, so there was no point for any history. And that wasn't my plan anyways for today's video. Today's video, we will be showing you some tips and tricks on how I build some of my trains, aka the boiler. Some of you know how to build a Lego boiler, but some of you don't know how to build the boiler like this. So today, you're in luck. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks. You can choose to follow this or not if you really want to. So let's get into it. The first tip or trick I've got to show you today is the boiler. Now one of my um, subscribers, also known as one of my friends, asked a question, how do you build a boiler? But they mistaked boiler for cylinder. But never mind that. So we're going to answer his question today and I'm going to show you how I build my steam locomotive boilers. Now, I won't be able to get into super detail, but I hopefully I'll be able to get into good enough detail that you can follow it as well. So let's get to it. As you can see, all steam locomotives have boilers. That's the whole reason how steam can chuff out steam. Without a boiler, it just wouldn't be possible for steam locos to function. Since the boiler carries the water, the heat, and all the piping that is inside that goes to the cylinders, aka the pistons, that pump out. The pistons go back and forth, which are connected to the connecting rods, which then go around and around, which move the locomotive. If the pistons never connected to the connecting rods, then the steam locomotive may steam, but it will never run. It will never move. It will stay stationary. Because there's nothing for the pistons to connect to. Hence why they're called driving wheels, since they drive the steam engine. You have a little bit of info about how steam logos work. So now you know a little bit of the boiler, let's show you how to actually build one of these. So first off, I'm gonna take the wind deflector off. The wind deflector is connected by a stud on sideways, which as you can see there, that stud is connected sideways. So you use like a connection piece, so basically a stud on the side brick, if you've seen them before. And yeah, you basically use them to attach bricks sideways, which is called snot, aka stud not on top. That's what that stands for if you didn't know. So you got this, this is one of the water tanks. Basically that pumps the water. So, let me go to the boiler here and let's see if I can try and pluck off a little bit of a piece. There we go. Now you can see there is a little bit of a boiler there. So basically what I did was I grabbed these connection pieces and you have that as the main base. Next you put two skinnies in between each one and then put another connection piece. The reason why we do this is because if those two connection pieces were placed either one apart or put together, it would not connect because they're a little bit off-centered. Off so if you do that way, the two skinnies and then the next connection piece, then that next curve will line up nice and flush with the rest of the boil. And it'll create that nice curve you've been looking for. Now, I'll see if I can have a look, if I can pluck off this piece. There we go. Now I remove that piece, and as you can see, the boiler's starting to look a little bit more square, because that is basically the structure of the boiler. So the structure of the boiler turns out to be square at first, and then you add all the curves and you make it all round. 
Now you may be wondering, what about the round curves underneath the boiler? For that, I'm going to have to take the entire boiler off this locomotive. So stay with me. This will just take a little bit of time. So I got the boiler off the engine. So basically, yeah, look how much the boiler takes up. Without a boiler on a steam engine, you look very, very dull. So as you can see, the boiler was attached by that, which then attaches to this. To make it even stronger, you can make the top one attached to that. But since I'm not quite done with the boiler yet, I want to make it easier to detach it. So it's still strong, but at the same time, you can pull it off pretty easily. That's what I did with the J-Class as well. And also, um, maybe you guys have noticed a pretty cool gold number plate. Yeah, that's right. We actually, I actually found a gold um, Sharpie or a gold texture. And Pork got outlined all the white in gold and it looks fantastic. It looks almost exactly like the real A19 up here. As you can see right there. All in gold. So we're connecting pieces upside down. He's gonna need to use another one of these useful parts. I believe these are not connection pieces, are they? Oh they are. Wow. I guess we did have them in dark red, but we use them in the boiler. The boiler was more important. So yeah, you get one of these connection pieces, and if you face them this way, and add, like, another piece, um, see if I can get an example. If I see, yeah, that piece, if you would attach it upside down, attach it there, and as you can see, the studs are now facing downwards. And if you do that for every single part, then you can actually get curves you know um, that don't exist on the upside down form and um, at the bottom of your trains of your locos basically use that so yeah that's how you can connect pieces on the bottom but there's also a much more easier way of just getting the upside down bricks but they only exist in one by one on my twos so yeah you get one by fours my twos two by twos all that good stuff underneath that and best of all since these since these don't exist in dark red we have to use, we are forced to use this design so we're able to have a full round boil so you probably see that later on in the k-class's life so i'll catch you back when this boiler is put back on so the boiler is put back on but there's one more thing i wanted to show you before we finish this off so you see uh, this piece here it's a black round curve that fits on the top of that red axle, and you can see it in the front. Well, no, one more thing I forgot to show you about the boiler, so I just plug that in the real quick. That brick there, that's this, that's the connection piece, and the last one that's after those two skinnies that you can see, right there. And then you add a brick on top of that, so then you can add those top curves. And that's just as normal, just add curves at the top, and there you go. You've got your boiler. Add detail, you basically need to add a tube slope piece there, and yeah, if you do that, then you actually be able to add detail because there's actually room to do that. If you were to just do it full curve, you couldn't add anything, so you had to add tube slopes, which are almost identical in curve, so it doesn't rupture the shape that much, which is great, and that's how you can add the, the funnel the light at the front and any other detail you want to add like the dome so yeah that is um how you build a steam engine boiler or exactly how i build my lego steam engine so i'll just quickly go put this black piece on bring it forward there you go and that's how you do that. So yeah, that is one of the tips and tricks that I wanted to show you today. The next tip, the next trick is if you want to build sideways on your models, then there's actually a way to do this. You add a connection piece that's one skinny, that's one whole brick above that last platform. So basically it's got to be two, um, two bricks tall. 
So a brick is this. So you can see there's one skinny on top, which is a tile. Add two of them, but make sure the second one on top of that first one is a connection piece. Because this will help on getting you a nice flush area. Now there is a way to get, once you attach this piece to there to get it flush with the sides. But it's a little bit more complicated build and doesn't really bother me that much. So yeah, that's what's happening there. The next add a tile because this isn't necessarily the full height of two bricks but if you add a tile there and connect like two skinnies of glass and then one skinny of a tile in yellow and then you can attach that sideways there. there you go boom so yeah and you see it's just slightly like the sticking out but it doesn't disturb the lock that much so yeah that is another tip and trick i've got for you so yeah piping also works really well for bars so basically same thing with the boiler there's a connection piece there basically you um see if i can pluck one of these guys out see this this is the kind of thing you want so you get a clip piece, a one by two skinny, and then a one by one cheese slope in that color. You attach that to, as you can see, there's a tie, there's a connection piece there. And if you add that there, then that's gonna fit in just like that. And then you can attach any kind of piping you want right there. So that's basically how you do that as well if you want to add detail to the side of your model with um just a flat surface without a curve it's a lot more easier just use a clip piece and you can attach it up to the side like i done with that cab as well now moving over to the back as you can see there's more of that sideways building technique but there's also a cab interior in there as you can see there's a shovel attached right inside there which is hidden behind the number plate since they, as far as I can tell, currently don't exist in dark red. Let's see if I can pluck off. There we go. So yeah, that one of those black pieces are the connecting piece that are holding the shovel on the other side. And with the number plate hides that up quite nicely. As you can see, you can barely even see that black eyes it up very very nice and yeah those are some of the tips and tricks I have got to show you sorry guys but I have to end this off now I know it wasn't a lot of tips and tricks but hopefully there might be a part two to this so if you want to see that then go ahead and um, hit that like button and yeah we'll see if we can get a part two so hopefully I'll see you guys all then Bye! So guys, I just wanted to say this. I hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas. And I um, wanted to say this because the next video will probably will be released around Christmas time. And you guys are probably doing Christmas stuff. So I hope you guys are going to have a great Christmas. And I wish you all the best for next year as well. So Merry Christmas everyone. And I'll see you guys next year.